welcome to all of you who are able to follow this lovely study. It is so interesting and so exciting. And we're having a look at the book of Esther in the King James Bible, how that story is recorded and how amazing it is because although the, the name of God is not mentioned in this book, you're going to see constantly the hand of God working with his people and providing for those faithful believers as he preserves that nation through a young girl. Absolutely amazing story. I'm Lauren Weiss from Grace Now Ministries. I appreciate you, you joining us and I pray my prayer is that you will be richly blessed as you grow in the knowledge of the word. Though we're looking at an Old Testament book, uh, in that you can find so many gems and so much information. And we understand the Old Testament in light of the dispensation of grace, understanding where the body of Christ fits in. So this overview and understanding how to rightly divide the Bible makes the Old Testament even more fantastic because we know where things fit. Now, if you haven't watched the first part of this talk, I would really ask you to go back, pick it up on Facebook or YouTube and have a listen to it and keep with us. Now, the other thing I want to mention is that the notes for this book are available. What it consists of is simply the text of the King James Bible, and then I've added uh, maps and charts as we go along. So work along with me, get your Bibles, get your notebook, and the, the notes give you the provision of a wide margin where you are able to make your own notes as we go along. The cross-references are always important in Bible study, so I hope you will be able to jot them down and then go over it later and put your own notes in and draw out the beautiful doctrines that you're going to learn, not only doctrines, but just gems, just encouraging, encouraging insights. And the Lord will show you some very precious points that he has for you to know. So the notes come, uh, as you can see on the screen, the book of Esther from the Old Testament. And it's a personal wide margin journal where you can make your own notes. So I will email this to you if you send me your email address and then you can print it and work along with us. The format looks like this, where you can see the King James scripture on the left hand side and you have your own wide margin for making your own notes. At the end of the notes, you'll find a helpful chart. Uh, we spoke about this in the last lesson, just so that you know the timeline of where Esther fits in. And here you can see that in 606 BC, around about there, uh, the Jews were taken captive by the King Nebuchadnezzar. That period lasted 70 years, which was prophesied by Jeremiah. And then in about 1540 BC, uh, we see that Persia conquers Babylon. And then in, we see that King Cyrus allows the Jews eventually to return at, towards the end of their exile. Then we have a look at the Persian rule, and when King Ahasuerus comes in, around about 485 BC, and uh, he comes in and reigns as the king of Persia. And it's during that time, as we move on to about 480 BC, that we pick up the, the book of Esther starting to be activated. It's just a couple of years later that Esther becomes the queen of Persia. You will also find a map of the empire, of Persia. And there, if you have a look there, you can see the yellow marks how big it was. It was from India to Ethiopia, the Bible tells us. In fact, it could even be slightly bigger than what this map represents. Remember, we learned last week that there were 127 provinces under the rule of King Ahasuerus. So we did look at chapter one in the last lesson. So we're going to pick up from chapter two, verse one. And I'd ask you to get into your Bibles. Let's have a look at the Bibles. Or you can work along in the notes, which is like a workbook uh, to, to assist you. I like making, uh, underlining, highlighting, making my own notes. I believe that helps us to absorb it much more pertinently. So let me um, go to chapter two. And we start reading there. Remember that Vashti has been deposed. And now we pick up the story uh, again. After these things, when the wrath of King Ahasuerus was appeased, he remembered Vashti and what she had done and what was decreed against her. Then said the king's servants that ministered unto him, let there be fair young virgins sought for the king let the, and let the king appoint appoint officers in all provinces of his kingdom that they may gather together all the fair young virgins 
unto Shushan the palace, to the house of the woman, unto the custody of Hegai, the king's chamberlain, keeper of the woman, and let their things for purification be given to them, and let the maiden which pleases the king be queen instead of Vashti, and the thing pleased the king, and he did so. A couple of points to mention here, which I think is very interesting. Um, just a quick reference, in verse 2 it talks about young virgins, and then you'll see that in verse 4 it uses the word maiden. So we know that the word maiden links to a young virgin. The other thing is it talks about finding fair young virgins. So notice here they were looking for girls that were young, girls that were pure, and girls that were beautiful. But keep in mind, there's no reference about nationality, which becomes so significant in the story. So they don't mention the nationality. There's 127 provinces to choose girls from. So the king's not bothered about their nationality. But these are the things that they are looking for. Pick up from verse 5. Now in Shushan the palace, there was a certain Jew whose name was Mordecai, the son of Jair, Shemiai, the son of Kish, a Benjamite, who had been carried away from Jerusalem with the captivity which had been carried away with Jeconiah, king of Judah, whom Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, had carried away. So uh, that would be a little bit after 606 captivity. Uh, but another point I want to just mention here is notice that Mordecai is referred to as a Jew. We see that the term Jew is used of any tribe, so long as that person is an Israelite and Mordecai was a Benjamite. Verse 7, and he brought up Hadassah, that is Esther, his uncle's daughter. So we know it was actually his cousin. And the name Esther means star. What a lovely name. For she had neither father nor mother, and the maid was fair and beautiful, whom Mordecai, when her father and mother were dead, took for his own daughter. So it came to pass, when the king's commandment and his decree was heard, and when the many maidens were gathered together in the Shushan palace to the custody of Hegai, that Esther was brought also into the king's house, to the custody of Hegai, the keeper of the woman. And the maiden pleased him, and she obtained kindness of him. And speedily he gave her the things for her purification, with such things as belonged to her, seven maidens which were meet to be given to her out of the king's house. And he preferred her and her maids unto the best place of the house of the woman. Esther had not showed her people nor her kindred, for Mordecai had charged her that she should not show it. And Mordecai walked every day before the court of the woman's house to know how Esther did and what should become of her. Just noting again the nationality, she'd not mentioned uh, that she was a Jewess, and also, it's interesting how the scripture refers to her people, how the unity of the Jewish nation, they were God's people, but they were there for one another. Now, picking up from verse 12, now, when every maid's turn was come to go into King Ahasuerus, after that she had been 12 months, according to the manner of woman, for so were the days of their purification accomplished, to wit, six months with oil of myrrh and six months with sweet odors and with other things for the purification of the woman. So they were covered with oils and perfumes, and uh, obviously there was some initial type of preparation for them to be a queen and how to behave before the, the king and the reality of the position that they were possibly being called to. Then thus came every maiden unto the king, whatsoever she desired was given to go with her out of the house of the woman unto the king's house. In the evening she went, and on the morrow she returned to the second house of the woman, to the custody of Shushagaz, the king's chamberlain, which kept the woman. She came in unto the king no more, except the king delighted in her, and that she recalled by name. Now, when the turn of Esther, the daughter of Abihail, the uncle of Mordecai, who had taken her for his daughter, was come to go into the king, she required nothing but what Higai, the king's chamberlain, the keeper of the woman, appointed. Now, this, this to me is interesting. You know, there's always something in every single word as you read it, this information that's coming through to give you an insight. Um, and I think that this, this is significant because here you've got this beautiful young Jewish girl 
and yet she's simple in her beauty and she doesn't take massive advantage of the opportunity she has to clothe herself in special clothes or, or cover herself with special jewelry, etc. but rather shows humility, which is such a beautiful virtue of any person. You know, the opposite of that is arrogance and haughtiness and pride and ego. And yet here is a young woman who trusts that Chamberlain's advice and just goes in with what he suggests, how she should approach the king. Uh, that, that, that shows to me humility and wisdom. And we read on. And Esther obtained favor in the sight of all of them that looked upon her. So Esther was taken unto King Ahasuerus into his house royal in the 10th month, which is the month Tebeth, and in the seventh year of his reign. And the king loved Esther above all the women, and she obtained grace and favor in his sight. More than all the virgins... So he set his royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. Then the king made a great feast unto all his princes and all his servants, even Esther's feast. And he made a release to the provinces, gave gifts according to the state of the king. So here we see interesting how she gains grace and favor. And, you know, I believe when we live for the Lord, the world is at hostility with God. But, you know, somehow as we continue, Paul speaks about us carrying a fragrance of truth to the world around us. And I believe that we can gain favor and grace in our opportunities to share with, with uh, to share the gospel with people. And um, the reason is that if you are a Christian and you are walking with the Lord, you're going to have a way with people that firstly shows them respect because we know saved or unsaved that they belong to the Lord, they were created by him for his glory, and that every soul has value. So when we talk to people, we talk to them with respect, and we treat them with dignity, and we also show them the kindness, because we are a reflection of God's love for people. And that, I, br I believe, brings us into good favor with many, many people. By all means, there are people where there will be hostility. But if you think of Paul, how he was taken a prisoner, and yet it was through those soldiers that kept him captive that he had so graciously shared the gospel that the palace of Caesar had heard the gospel of grace. And many, many believers came as a fruit of that. But it was, you, you know what, the way you treat people is very important because that will reflect the way that they will treat you. And they'll pick up your kindness to them. That is different from the way the world treats its own people. I believe it makes a massive difference. We pick up from verse 19. And when the virgins were gathered together the second time, then Mordecai sat in the king's gate. Now, it says there when the virgins were gathered the second time. Um, I'm not sure if I'm right about this, but what I would understand there is he's talking about virgins. So although these girls were called to spend an evening with the king, the king did not have intimate relations with them because he was choosing a queen and undoubtedly wanted the queen to be pure for the role she was going to play. Verse 20. Esther had not yet showed her kindred nor her people as Mordecai had charged her. For Esther did the commandment of Mordecai like as when she was brought up with him. In those days, while Mordecai sat at the king's gate, two of the king's chamberlains, Bigthan and Teresh, of those which kept the door, were wroth and sought to lay hand on King Asherus. The thing was known to Mordecai, who told it to Esther the queen, and Esther certified the king thereof in Mordecai's name. Now, this little incident becomes a very important part of God's working in this situation. You know, the Lord knows all things. And I'll tell you what, he puts information in our hands when we need it. I really believe that uh, as you go through life, there are times when you, when you need insight and the Lord will bring you inf information via the word as you study it, via perhaps a sermon via other means such as a book, a Christian book that may give you insight. And I'm not talking about extra biblical revelation such as dreams and visions because we know that that does not apply. But something in your circle of circumstances and people around you will give you insight on occasion. 
but be careful of being too subjective. Nevertheless, what I'm saying here is, as it works out, especially the way that it did in the Old Testament, we see the hand of God working in the background circumstances. We pick up from verse 23. And when an inquisition was made of the matter, it was found out. Therefore, they were both hanged on a tree. And it was written in the books of the chronicles before the king. Now, this is the uh, records that are kept of the Persian and kings of media as well. Very important because, um, again, this plays a massive part in this beautiful story. Well, folks, our time is up. Uh, on that chapter, next study, we'll pick up on chapter three and we'll learn more about the enemy of the Jews and what comes in and how interesting that really is. So please join me next time and uh, take care. Read your scriptures until we meet again. Blessings. Mm -hmm.